In this problem, we have to find the intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing, and we also have to find the relative extrema. Let's go ahead and work through this. So the first step in these problems is to find the critical numbers. So critical numbers are numbers in the domain of the function where the derivative is zero or undefined. So this is a polynomial, so its derivative will never be undefined. It will always be uh, defined. So all we have to do is take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So f prime of x, it's a pretty easy derivative. Uh, we just use the power rule. So multiplying the twos, because you bring it down, so you get negative 4x. And the derivative of 12x is 12. And the derivative of 1 is 0. And as you can see, there's no like division by 0. There's no funky square roots. So this is never undefined. So now we just have to set it equal to 0. So subtracting 12 from both sides will give us negative 4x equals negative 12. Just subtracting 12. And these cancel. And then dividing by negative 4, dividing by negative 4, will give us x equals 3. So now we're supposed to mentally check that, you know, this is actually a critical number. So we, we set the derivative equal to 0, and we have to check that it's in the domain of the function. And so what that means is, if we were to hypothetically plug it back into our function, would the result make sense? Well, it certainly would, right? We're not dividing by anything. There's no square roots. Everything is nice and pretty. You can put 3s where all the x's are, and you'll get a nice answer. So this is actually a critical number. So I'm just going to call it a cn. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the derivative one more time over here uh, because we're going to be referencing it in the next step. So negative 4x plus 12. Okay, so once you find your critical numbers, um, what you do is you draw a number line. So you draw a number line, and then you plot all of your critical numbers uh, on the number line. If there's any like domain restrictions, like asymptotes or things like that, you would plot those as well. But again, in this case, uh, it's a nice, beautiful polynomial, so no issues. So you plot to 3. Now you pick test points. So you pick any number you like that's smaller than 3. How about 0? So f prime of 0. And you plug those points into the derivative. Okay. So this will be negative 4 times 0 plus 12, which is 0 plus 12, which is 12. So that's positive. So because the first derivative is positive, our function is increasing here. How about a number that is bigger than 3? So now you pick any number bigger than 3, any number you like over here. So how about 4? So f prime of 4, that'll be negative 4 times 4 plus 12. That's negative 16 plus 12, which is negative 4. Negative 4 is less than 0. That means it's decreasing over here. So now we can write down almost all of the answers. So from negative infinity to 3, the function is getting bigger, so it's increasing. So increasing on negative infinity, comma 3. It's really important to use parentheses whenever you're describing intervals where functions are increasing or decreasing. And then it's decreasing from 3 to infinity, so decreasing on parentheses 3 comma infinity that's where it's decreasing the question also wants extrema so if you just draw what's happening you can usually figure it out let's see so it's increasing 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 then it's zero and then it's decreasing 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 oh look we have a maximum so we have a relative maximum so rel max at x equals 3 so whenever this behavior happens at a critical number um, you get a maximum. By the way, this is called the first derivative test. It actually has a name. You know, me drawing this little picture and saying we have a maximum. It's really intuitive, but it, the people have given it a name. They call it the first derivative test. So we have a maximum at 3. And so to find the y value for the maximum, you have to go back to the original function. You take this number and you go back to the original. So f of 3 is negative 2 times 3 squared plus 12 times 3, plus 1. So this is negative 18. Ooh, doing it in my head. 2 times 9 is 18. Ooh, plus 36, plus 1. So that's 18 plus 1, right, because you add these and you get 18, 
equals 19. So that is the maximum, 19. Uh, if you want the ordered pair, it would be 3, 19. That would be the ordered pair where you have a relative maximum. And there is no minimum, right? There is no minimum in this problem. Uh, it just didn't, didn't happen. So I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.